In this video, we're going to talk about the power system requirements and mounting it and so forth on our QSC Tricopter project. Um, if you want to know more about the power systems that we're using in these airframes, we have two suggested systems. And if you listen to um, our 109th installment of the CrashCast, you'll get the dope on the, the two main power systems that my friend John and I like to use on these. For this airframe, I'm using the lightweight power system. I don't intend to carry more than oh, a camera of one or two ounces and, and, and then be able to fly the thing. So I'm using the Tower Pro 2410-09 Outrunners. I'm using an APC 1047 Slow Fly Prop, and I'm using the compression style uh, Collet Prop Adapter. Now, when I get ready to mount these things, uh, I need to come up with you know how I'm going to put them on. And what I did is I just drilled some pilot holes, and I used some number four uh, wood screws, half inch long, and that's how I've mounted in using this this uh, prop or this motor mount adapter that uh, came with the motors. That's the ones that I like to use. Now you have to be careful when you're. This is the rear yaw pivot block. You'll have to be careful when you mount these. You'll have to turn them away because remember, we're going to have an axle shaft going through here, and you want to be sure that your screws. If you look in there, you can see the screws are going to protrude back and down you want to be sure that you don't position that motor in such a way that those screws come down and interfere with your axle shaft. So something to think of. And uh, that's how I've put them on. Remember I drilled relief holes in our last video. I think we talked about I drilled relief holes so that the shaft on the back side of this motor doesn't rub on our plywood block. Something else that I've done that I want to show you to take a little strain off of our cords our, uh, our power leads to the motor. I've just drilled a couple of holes and I've secured the wires down with a zip tie. Now that's going to be kind of hard to do on our rear plate because well we don't have that much wood to work with. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to center this up and then I'm going to put a big old dollop of, of uh, hot glue on here and press the cords into it and then I may string a little hot glue across and that will allow me to hold those cords and take tension off or take stress off of the wires as they go into the motor. And I think that's pretty important to do. So that's basically what I've got done. I've mounted my motors and we're going to talk a little bit more about the rest of the power system uh, shortly here. The next thing we need to discuss is how do we want to mount our speed controllers to our airframe. Now, it is perfectly acceptable, and many po people will do this, but it's, it's perfectly acceptable to just simply mount your speed controller right there to the top of each of your booms, allow your motor wires to go right to your motor, and then you can extend your, your uh, signal wire that goes to your receiver, or in this case goes to our flight stabilization system, and then you're going to have to extend your power leads. Uh, perfectly acceptable to do that, but when you mount that on in, in this configuration, your front booms will lose the ability to fold back. And I designed this to be a folder. Now you can do this by all means. You can set up your system like this. I have elected to do something a little different. I want to put all of my speed controllers inside of the airframe. So I have extended the leads out. And in our latest podcast episode on power systems, we discussed a good way of extending your wires uh, nice and cheap. And basically all I'm using is 16 gauge speaker wire. You can also use lamp cord if you should need the, you know, need to do that. Uh, but I've used speaker wire, I've stripped the two pairs out and then used a third strand. And I've soldered them to the speed controller. I've put my bullet connectors on the other end so that I can unplug uh, and unplug motors. And this, and, and then I've braided the wires. And by braiding the wires, you, you just basically keep the mess to a minimum, I think. So I can actually mount the speed controller in the airframe and it just, in my opinion, it keeps it neater looking and it allows you to fold up the arms. Um, if you don't know how to braid, ask your teenage daughter or your wife to help you. <laughs> so anyway, I'll show you how I'm going to do that a little bit later. But you may want to consider setting up something like this. This is just, you know, nice quality speaker wire and I actually paid like seven dollars for a big spool of it from Radio Shack so that's a good way of, of doing it. Now 
Now what is shown in this picture is perhaps the most frustrating and challenging part of this entire project. You've got to build your power distribution harness. And if you're good at soldering, you won't have a problem with this. If you're not very good at soldering, well, like old Crash here, <laughs> then you're probably going to have a bit of a pain with it. In which case, uh, you may want to get somebody to help you out uh, or just you know learn it yourself. Take your time and, and figure it out. Now, again, I'm using a 16 gauge wire in this power harness because I need wire that's going to be able to ca carry amperage, carry current from the battery uh, that is capable of sustaining a current that all three of my motors and speed controllers are going to draw. In this case, for my application, 16 gauge wire works well. So, let's talk about this a little bit. I have a typical Dean's plug. Now, this is what's going to plug into my battery. So in addition to my positive and negative wires, I also have soldered in this guy right here. And it's just a male, I think it's a male Dean's plug. And that is going to plug into my switch. Um, remember, with this flight stabilization system that we're going to use, it's important that we have the ability to power up the receiver and the flight stabilization system independent of the speed controllers. So that's the reason I have those wires like that. If you look down, you can probably see I've got two wires going to the positive, two wires going to the negative. Now also, I have this other plug just thrown in here, and I apologize, my soldering skills aren't really all that great, so you can see it here. This is in the red line, in our positive line, and this is just a shorting plug. So you'll make this, and then when you, when you plug in the battery and you throw your switch to your electronic system, well, now your, um, your, again, your flight stabilization system and your receiver will be live, but not the speed controllers. And after you've calibrated that system and you're ready to power up the speed controllers, well, then you take this shorting plug and put it in. And now we would have power going to our speed controllers and we'd basically be ready to fly. Now, we've got our two power wires, our positive and our negative, but we've got to split those out because we have to go into three speed controllers. So that's what I've done here. From the black, I've branched off and I have three wires and I have three wires for the positive. Right now, my speed controller did not come with Dean's plugs or anything like that on the power, uh, um, on the, yeah, on the input power, positive and negative wires. So what I did is to be able to plug and unplug those to facilitate easy installation and, and removal from my airframe, I just used three and a half millimeter bullet connectors. And if, in your case, if you were doing Dean's plugs, well, then you'd take two and you'd put those on a power plug. And then you take a positive and negative here and then again here. And I just went with bullet connectors. It was the cheapest solution and it was also real easy to deal with. I hate soldering Dean's plugs. Just be careful when you're putting your heat shrink on here. Be sure that you cover all exposed metal. Uh, because if you don't, when you have a positive and a negative, side by side and we get a little vibration in our airframe you know something can touch and short out and you're going to crash your your aircraft so that is a word on our power system uh, distribution and i hope that makes sense to you it's it's really pretty straightforward but i uh it, it's going to be the most challenging part uh, soldering this thing together if you look around on the youtube you're probably going to find lots of great tutorials on how to solder and 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 so forth so that's our that's our wire harness now remember I mentioned that we need to be able to bring up our receiver and our flight stabilization system independent of the speed controller so you know we need to be able to do that otherwise when we plug the whole thing in motors are liable to come up and and before your flight stabilization system has an opportunity to load the program and then establish its benchmark so we have to address that system now remember we've put in a small JST plug here that goes directly into our battery and and uh, you know we gotta be be sure to hook that up to a source before our shorting plug and that's you know what I've done here in this harness now what I would recommend is get yourself a little switch like this. This is just a simple on off switch, light duty for RC use. And I will plug that in to that. And then I'll plug in my BEC. Now this, 
This BEC is a simple one. It costs uh, current price right now at Heads Up RC for the Power Up 3 Amp Switch Mode BEC. Uh, it's like seven bucks, so it's really cheap and it's good. It works real well. You have a five volt and a six volt setting. If you want to put it on five volts, that's perfect. If you want to put it on six volts, that's perfect too. Make sure your receiver can handle that kind of uh, voltage. But from here, we'll plug that in to um, to the other side of our switch. And the reason we want to plug it into this side is we want to be able, at this point with our system, we can actually plug in our battery and as long as this switch is off and our shorting plug is out, then that battery is plugged in but is absolutely having, it's having no current drawn from it at all. So you can leave it in your car like that. Um, by having the switch before the BEC, that, that allows us to do that. Now, when we're ready to power up our electronics, our flight stabilization system, and our receiver, we simply turn this on, and we have power regulated right out, right out to our electronic components. So that's how I recommend you do that. And you can use my previous uh, tricopter design. I used a Castle Creations 10-amp uh, BEC, one of the best ones on the market. But it's $25. This is QSC. Quick, simple, cheap. We're going to use a $7 BEC from Heads Up RC. Okay, at this point we've pretty much got a completed airframe and all that's left to do is install our flight stabilization system. I want to show you a few things. Uh, what I've done here, and I'll try to pick these up on camera. First off, this is the rear of our tri. Remember I said I was going to take a little bit of hot glue and put us in a little cable restraint? Well, that's what I've done there. That keeps our, our three power wires going to our motor from, from flexing away. Uh, I've got my servo in place. I've run my wires for my power uh, from my ESC down the side of the boom. I've just used electrical tape to secure those in place and a zip tie up here because, well, I didn't have much room. Um, just a word, when you center up your servo, when you set your servo at center, and I usually do that, uh, and your arm on it is, is completely parallel, like this, well, you want, with that arm parallel, I've got to make an adjustment here, but with that arm parallel, you want the motor to be cocked over just a few degrees like that. Uh, for our flight stabilization system, and we'll talk more about that later, I expect. Um, so anyway, looking at the rear boom with the yaw control, I've got the power wires coming up to the ESC, and the ESC is between the boom and this side wall here, so it's buried up in here. On the other side of the boom, inside the frame, I have my BEC that's going to supply our power to our receiver and our flight stabilization system. I've got my switch right here, and I just hot glued it, just uh, you know, quick and quick and dirty. I've hot glued it. You could go in and relieve out and put the switch inside the frame. That would be fine, but that hot glue holds really good, and I just stuck it on there. Now moving up to our fronts, you can see I've got, again, I've used electrical tape here to secure the uh, motor wires to the boom. The reason I've done that is, again, I want this, this tricopter to fold. And if I used a zip tie, well, that's going to throw it off and it's not going to want to fold because our, our decks are, are so close together. They're exactly three quarter inches apart to account for the booms. So I've just used electrical tape to hold that all in place. Everything's nice and neat there. Uh, I've done that on both of the front ones. Now the speed controllers for the front, I'm going to try to zoom in here on this nose, but I've got the speed controller in here and the wires are coming around and looping around to come out to the boom. But you can see it's up in there. Now you can hot glue that in place or perhaps you want to put Velcro on it, whatever you want to use there. I'm just going to leave mine like that and what I'll probably end up doing is taking a little short section of 1 8 inch light ply and just cutting it to a 3 quarter inch square and stick it in there and, and glue it in place and that'll keep my speed controllers set. Now our harness this is where it got busy in here. I've got the harness going to all three of, all the, all the reds, all three reds are going to three reds on the speed controllers. Same thing for the blacks, and I've tucked it all out of the way. 
This is our shorting plug. And I've just taken a zip tie here and zip tied it in place. Now that plug will stay, you know, right there. We'll put our battery here and, you know, it'll reach around and be able to plug in there just fine. Uh, additionally, I'm going to put a little Velcro on here to hold my batteries, and then this strap also will provide an extra extra measure of safety to keep to, to keep from losing the battery, to be certain I don't lose the battery. So, the front speed controller for the front right is here, and the front left is in here. The rear speed controller is on this side, facing the top, and the BEC is on this side. I've got my rear servo wire coming up through this side also. So what I end up from on the top, coming out this top hole, is I've got the front right uh, uh, speed controller wire that plugs into the radio, or in this case it's going to plug into our flight stabilization system. There's the front left. There's the rear. This is the power from my BEC. And then finally my rudder servo, my yaw servo. So again, with that, we have pretty much a completed QSC tricopter airframe and all it's ready for is our electronics. So we'll probably resume with that next week.